so much. And I have standing here with me at the Pat Buttram Day in Addison, Mr. Tom Lester. Eb Dawson well, from wonderful. Green Acres. Well, wonderful to meet you, Mrs. Lee, and I bring you greetings from Green Acres and Hooterville and all those dear people out there. Honestly, uh, uh, Tom, you don't look any older. You oh, still look great. Let's see, uh, any of you folks have a, a, a what, what do you call those places that sell glasses? You really? Yeah. I know, I remember you were the youngest in the class I, uh, in that uh, whole yes, episode, but sure the crew, you were the very youngest actor. Yes, but now, um, what about the rest of them? Are, is everyone gone now except you? Yes, ma'am. It's a, it's real sad, but everybody's there passed away. There might be just a few gray hairs, but you still look the same as <laughs> well, that. Well, you're very that kind. that television Thank you. show. Well, it was a wonderful show, and it was clean. And oh, as I traveled that's around, the thing. Yes, ma'am. As I traveled around across the country, people tell me that there's nothing they can watch on television anymore. You can't sit down as a family and watch TV like you could in those days. I know it's sad. And what's happened is we've gone from a biblically-based culture, which this country was founded on, to a postmodern uh, kind of a culture where everybody decides from within themselves what's right and wrong, and that's a fiasco. That's a oh, disaster. it is. It is. I, it, it, it was such a wonderful time uh, in the 60s. Yes, ma'am. Good, we start, clean, good, clean fun. Yes, ma'am. We started in 1965, and we were canceled in 1971. And they canceled us and Beverly Hillbillies and Mayberry RFD, which was a spinoff off the Andy Griffith show. And uh, they just decided to take all their country shows off the air. Isn't and that that's a shame? A, yes, ma'am. And we were all in the top 10 and top 20 in the nation, and yet they took us off. Several years later, I heard the same guys that did that. They were on Larry King, and they said it was one of the biggest mistakes that they'd ever made. Oh, certainly for our culture. I mean, uh, today we have a two or three, well, we have two generations now that are just almost unchurched. Don't yes, you think? Yes, ma'am, that's true. And television program, we watch nothing but news because uh, it, it is not family television anymore. News and the Weather Channel. Oh. That's about it. Yeah, it's really sad. What we're doing, we're throwing God out of everything. And when a country begins to throw God out of everything, then, oh, you're so right. then the wrath of the Lord comes against us. Oh, and well, you can see what's happening look what's in happening America. To our country. Look what's happening because of what we've thrown our our face, I mean, our, we put our fist in God's face. It's really sad. It is. As a country, we have. Very sad. But those were such happy days. Yes, ma'am, they were. And uh, that uh, program ran for, did you say, six years? Yes, ma'am. We started in 1965, and we were canceled in 1971. And it was the first year of color. See, at Beverly Hillbillies was three years before us, and they were in black and white. And then Petticoat Junction was a spinoff off of the Beverly, Hills, uh, Beverly Hillbillies. And they were, ran two years in black and white, and then Green Acres came on, and uh, that was the first year of color on television. So it was really neat. We had a great time. Oh, it was a wonderful program. The elite in Hollywood didn't really appreciate these these country programs, but you said you did get some recognition from uh, the Southern California University. Did they not? Um, well, yeah, uh, USC, they gave an award to our show, and it's the first time a television show had ever gotten that award. It's one of the great television shows of all time. It, Hollywood never really understood Green Acres. It was, it was a very different kind of a show, and uh, it was surreal is what it was, and we had marvelous writers. And the reason those shows like Green Acres and Beverly Hills, but it's Petticoat, Andy Griffith, Lucy, and all those shows were so good, the writing was so good. And see, most of those writers had come out of radio, and even some of them vaudeville, and they really understood comedy. And then they graduated into television, Green Acres, Petticoat Country, and all those shows. And that's the reason the shows were so good, because the writers were so fabulous, and they knew how, they knew what comedy was all about. Oh, See, like when, uh, like on Green Acres, just to give you an example, we, Mr. Douglas and I had been working on the tractor, and so we came in for lunch. And uh, it, Mr. Douglas goes in and sits down, he says, what are we having for lunch, Lisa? And she said, we having hot water soups, darling. And he said, we're having what? She said, we having hot water soup. He said, Lisa. He said, what's in it? She says, nothing's in it, darling. If anything was in it, it wouldn't be hot water soup. <laughs> and so about that time, he said, look, Lisa. And about that time, I come in. And I said, what are we having for lunch, Miss Douglas? She said, be having hot water soup. I said, oh, boy. And I sit down, and she pours me a bowl of hot water soup. Now the camera comes back on Mr. Douglas. And he said, Lisa, honey. He said, you got to understand something. 
He said, nobody in their right mind is going to eat hot water soup. And man, I'm over there whooping it down going, <laughs> golly, Ms. Douglas makes the best hot water soup in the whole valley. <laughs> now, the reason that works is, is because we played that real. In other words, you folks out there on television and you as an audience, obviously, need to understand and realize that I think hot water soup is really great. <laughs> I mean, I really loved it. And if you didn't believe that, if I didn't make you believe that I really love hot water soup, then that whole scene goes right down the tubes. Because <laughs> Mr. Douglas is the audience. He's saying, look, nobody in their right mind is going to eat this stuff. And I'm over there whooping it right down. <laughs> Golly. And so you've got to make that stuff believable. And you watch uh, television today, a lot of the comedy shows, they don't make their comedy real. They don't make oh, it believable. My. And it was, but we had a but great Tom, time. Now, we got to talk about did, Mr. Butcherman a little bit here. Yes. How did you keep a straight face? Well, <laughs> you laugh during rehearsal. Oh, and you get it over you with. Did. You know, if you do yeah. it three or four times, then you don't laugh so much. And uh, so, But it's hard. It's really hard, I'm telling you, to keep a straight face. Oh, you I know. Do it that. Oh, I know. It must or have been. they wouldn't let you be on TV now, see? So when you That's get on TV and you become famous. And, well, and you develop an English accent, you don't even know who I am anymore. Just know you got to keep a straight how, face. How did your family and friends treat you back in Mississippi after you were on that hit show? Did well, they, you know, they thought it was really neat, and it's wonderful to be on a running television. Well, show. those that gave you no hope at all of ever achieving anything in Hollywood, uh, wasn't that sweet to come back with something successful going on? Well, it made believers out of them. Yes, See, it did. What, what, See, they used to tell me when they'd say, Tom, what would you like to do someday? And I said, I'd like to go out to Hollywood, California, become an actor. And they said, you'll never make it because you're too tall, you're too skinny, you're too ugly. You got a southern accent, you don't look like Rock Hudson. And so I tried a lot of things, believing my friends and thinking, well, maybe I can't do this. Yet I knew in my heart, after I came to know Christ, I knew in my heart that this is what God wanted me to do. And my friends would say, well, you'll never be able to do that. And so I listened to them, tried a lot of things that never worked out. Finally, I went out to Hollywood, California, and I went up on Green Acres. Them. You showed them. Well, you know. Did they apologize to you later? No, not really. <laughs> they were just glad I was on Green Acres. But what's important is that we need to understand that God's got a wonderful plan for all of our lives. And if we'll trust him, there's always somebody out there that's going to tell you you can't accomplish something in life that you feel like you've been blessed to be able to accomplish. And so you just don't pay any attention to them. That's right, and all the yes. young people need to hear that and remember that. That's, that's right, and I can't tell you the number of people that said to me, said, you know, in my heart, I always wanted to do this, but people discouraged me, and then I thought maybe I couldn't do it yet. I really wanted to do it, so I did something else in life, but I look back on it wishing I had at least tried it. And I told Mother and Daddy, I left them crying in the driveway, and I said, I just feel like God wants me to go out to Hollywood, California, and become an actor, and I said, I'm, at least I'm going to try it. And I'd have rather gone out there and tried and failed than never to have gone out there at all. And so if I'd have gone out there and it hadn't worked out and I'd have turned around and come back home, that would have been okay, but at least I tried. That's good and, wisdom. And it's really That's important good wisdom to do for that young in life. people yes, to remember that. Oh, uh, Pat Buttram. Oh. He, oh, he was so funny. But you know, the whole family is funny. But their sister Mamie, um, I tell you, I met them when I was researching my book yes, about Nauvoo. It's a little town over in Walker County. Yes, ma'am. And um, the Buttram family lived in Nauvoo for a couple of years while their father, Mac Buttram, was the pastor okay. out there at the uh, Nauvoo Methodist Church. And um, so when I found out someone famous had lived there, you know, I couldn't wait to get meet the family and get a little bit in my book. Yes, ma'am. And uh, so I do have a couple of photos in here. And I want to give you a copy of the book. Well, you're so kind. Thank you. Well, and, and, and so Mamie, their sister, you know sisters, they could really cut them down. She said, now, she said, Pat wasn't the funniest one in the family. She said, our brother Johnny was far uh, funnier. And so she had cut Pat down to size, you know. Oh, golly. That's so good. Mamie gave me um, Pat's home telephone number. And so when I called him uh, to get his, you know, uh, thoughts and see if yes, he could remember anything about Nauvoo, he couldn't because he was too young. But I wanted to talk to him a little bit about my, for my book. And um, so I called and of course I yak a lot. So I jumped right in and, um, and he couldn't hang up on me, see, because his sister Mamie gave me his number. Well, that's right. So he had to talk to me. And so I jumped in, you know, uh, 
talking a mile a minute, and I said, oh, Mr. Buttram, I'm so sorry. I didn't uh, think to ask you, you know, if you were busy. And he says, well, I'm watching the World Series, and it was the bottom of the night. <laughs> And I thought at that point I had already messed up the game, and so I just kept talking. I, my husband couldn't believe it that, that I did that funny. to him. That's oh, funny. but he was so funny. Um, even was... if you remember, um, even the messages on his recorder were funny. I called once, and the recording said um, something about uh, he I'd always had a little joke on there. Uh, people used to wear. Um, tennis sneakers because they couldn't afford shoes and now they have to wear shoes because they, they couldn't afford, afford sneakers yeah that's funny <laughs> when i when i got on green acres of course it was the first thing i'd ever done and it's a good thing that god had gifted me in timing and all that sort of thing and then all i had to do was just learn kind of structure but um uh, when i first got on there and we started some of the scenes that we were doing sometimes i wouldn't quite understand everything and i could if mr buttram was there i'd go to him and I'd say, uh, Mr. Buttram, what do they, what do they want me to do here? Because our director sometimes had a little trouble telling me, because he was not an actor's director, really. Really, he was a producer's director, and he was a wonderful, wonderful director. Sometimes he, he couldn't quite help me understand what he wanted, and it didn't happen a lot of times. I'd go to Mr. Buttram or Mr. Albert, and and they would tell me what, he, and I said, Oh yeah, I can do that, fine. But they just helped me to understand. And so Mr. Buttram and I became really great, great friends, and I'm really honored to be here today. I think this is terrific, raising money. Um, let's see, the name of that little club is? Uh, the, this, uh, uh, um, the Civitan, Civitan Tan yeah, Club. The club. Addison and, Civitan Club. Yeah, and Mr. and Mrs. Suddeth were the ones that invited me here. And uh, they're raising money to help uh, little handicapped children with toys and all kinds of things that they need. And I think that's really great, so when anybody here uh, gets involved and, and buys some of the little things that are going on that they can buy here or whatever and donate some money. It really goes for a wonderful cause. Oh, it But does. Mr. Buttram, he was very, very special. And he just had that wonderful voice, as you know. Oh, he did. And, uh, and it of, was a stage voice. Oh, yeah. It just He sounded a little bit like that in real life sometimes, though. Well, it made him revert back to it. He did it so yeah, much, Yeah, I think he revert back without realizing what he was doing. Well, <laughs> anyway, he was funny, and he always came in with some funny stories, and we just had a great time. The character actors on there were myself and Mr. Buttram and Mr. Kimball, that was Albie Moore, oh, yes. and uh, Mr. Drucker, of course, and Alf and Rath the Carpenters, and we'd just kind of all get around and, <laughs> and just have a wonderful time just talking about a lot of things. It was just exciting to listen to these people oh. because they'd been in the business for years and years and years. You know, Mr. Buttram was with the Mean Autry for all those years. Oh, that's right. And that was one of the great westerns mm -hmm. of the time. It that was. one and Roy Rogers. And uh, what a what a marvel heritage that we all have. That's when television and movies were really great.